Now, today's Bible study is titled Touching Jesus for Perfect Wholeness. And it's actually a very important uh, study that I would have loved to spend a long time to discuss, but I do also recognize that it is not the length of time we spend talking that really matter, but uh, <clears throat> getting the message and putting it to practice. When I was preparing for this message, one of the things, the very first thing that got flagged up in my mind is that the miracles we are going to read about here only happened immediately after the disciples and Jesus has crossed over the stormy sea. Remember the studies we've had recently, how Jesus has sent the disciples to cross over to the other side, and how the disciples have struggled throughout the night. They couldn't make a progress, just 3.75 uh, <clears throat> miles of what could have been either 8 to 15 uh, miles journey. And it was in the last watch of the night between 3 and 6 a.m. that Jesus saw them in that deep trouble. Jesus came over walking to them on the water, and eventually they crossed over. And what occurred to me <clears throat> is that look at the storms, look at the troubles that they had to weather, look at the situation they had to go through before they got to these miraculous breakthroughs. And that reminded me very strongly that when you are encountering intensive battle, intensive spiritual warfare in your life, you need to know that there is a miracle awaiting for you on the other side. And it is because of that miracle waiting for you <clears throat> that the devil is intensifying this battle, making uh, it appear as if hell is let loose. And it's doing that to bring discouragement to make a person go back, to make a person look back and fail to get the miracles and the blessings that is awaiting for that individual on the other side. And that is one of the reasons we must not uh, give up. We must not allow anything to hinder us. We must not allow discouragement to set in when we are encountering what appears to be a long battle are from evening when they departed till uh, the last watch of the night. Many hours had passed. They would have gone weary. Remember, inside that kind of situation, it wasn't a type of situation that you could say, let me sleep. No, they had to stay awake. No sleep throughout the night, trying to fight the elements, the water, the waves, uh, just to stay afloat. They could have been very weary and very worn out. And that is the kind of situation we sometimes go through in our life, in our battle. And so when things like that begin to happen, remember there is something awaiting for you, big miracle awaiting for you on the other side. The devil is trying to fight to hinder you from getting there. And this also coincided with some of the things I'm reading, as I mentioned, I adopt the approach of systematically reading through the Bible. Uh, I'm not in a hurry about reading it. Doesn't matter the number of chapters I read in a day. I just take it, I read it to understand, not just to uh, 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 go through. And I don't keep a count of how many times I've read uh, through the Bible. Uh, if you ask me how, how many times, I wouldn't know because I don't keep any record. I don't count anything. <clears throat> Uh, but right now in my latest reading, um, in the book of uh, Samuel, uh, uh, Samuel, and particularly the, eight, the stories I've been reading the last few days is the troubles, the difficulties that David encountered out after he was anointed to become a king. And you would have thought because he's been anointed, he's been appointed to become a king, the journey is going to be smooth. Everything is going to be easy. Everything is going to be fine. And because God is on his side, uh, maybe there wouldn't be all these problems, all these difficulties, but the exact opposite happened to be the case. He's anointed, and yet it was like hell let loose. Saul looking for him, fighting for him. At one point, he was nearly caught. <laughs> When he was on this uh, 
going on this side of the mountain, Saul on the other, and Saul with his army have circled him around. It appeared there was going to be no escape at that moment. And news just came to Saul. Saul, the Philistines are attacking uh, Israel at this point. Come immediately. And he abandoned the chasing for David and go. God will always do something at the nick of time to deliver his people. At that point, it appears there was no hope for David. But God just miraculously opened the door, turned things around. That's what the Bible tells us, that God will come. And that early will come at the nick of time. And again, it still points out to the fact that we don't give up. We don't get discouraged. We don't think there was uh, going to be uh, no victory, no solution at all. Let's keep believing. Let's keep trusting. Let's keep fighting. Somebody said, let the testing time be the trusting time. Uh, and uh, one of the songs we normally sing, Courage, Brothers, do not stumble. He says, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. So when there is danger, it's not the time to give up. When uh, 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 enemy strength ar arises, let us also rise with greater spiritual strength to fight and to oppose, knowing that the Bible tells us that we should stand and face Peter uh, five tells us we need to resist steadfast in the faith uh, <clears throat> and that the God of all patience uh, knows and sees what we are going through. And after we've suffered a while, will uh, step in, will deliver us, will strengthen us, and will make everything uh, come to uh, uh, a calmness in Jesus' name. So in the story today, we move on, continuing from where we stopped last time. We come to the point that Jesus and the disciples are now on the other side of the lane. And we are told uh, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 34 to 36, and when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And the last phrase there is very important. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Now, some of these sick people, they may have been held captive by demonic strongholds. They may have been sustained in that uh, sickness by demonic powers. Remember the woman that the, uh, Jesus Christ um, healed of that bent uh, uh, back. He said it was the daughter of Abraham who Satan has bound for these 18 years. Satan was binding those people with sicknesses, with troubles, with difficulties, with all those things. And some of them may have been kept in that bondage for 18 years. And Satan is describing the Bible as the person that puts people in prison and never opened the prison door. He has no intention of releasing them. He knew that if Jesus came over to this side, all those captives were going to set, be set free. And he's going to lose his territory, which is why he fought to prevent Jesus coming over them. And we are told that as many as torch were made perfectly whole. And tonight, the focus of my message is that straight forth your hand, touch Jesus. As you touch him by faith today, he's going to make you perfectly whole. In a parallel passage to that in Mark, Mark's account, Mark chapter 6, verse 53 to 56, we are told, and when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him and ran uh, through that whole region about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where the, uh, the, the head he was. And whithersoever he, he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the street and besought him that they might touch if it were, but at the border of his coming and as many as touched him were made whole. Today, we're going to touch God, and God is going to make, make us whole. It doesn't matter what situation you are going through. It doesn't matter what problem. It doesn't matter what uh, uh, challenges you may be encountering. 
if you touch God <clears throat> by faith, you are going to be made whole. Actually, maybe it's one of the testimony I may still share later on. I've been facing challenges as well. And recently, it just occurred to me, I needed to make my time with God uh, 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 very serious. And, uh, I mean, yes, I pray, but it doesn't mean I have to pray too, uh, too long. I still have to go to work in the daytime, although I'm working from home. And when I'm work, I give all the time for the work. Uh, generally, I don't take personal calls during the time for work today. Uh, my sister phone, I didn't answer the phone because I was at work and I've not yet called back. I will call back when I finish uh, this uh, meeting. <clears throat> uh, but I dedicate, before I go to sleep, I just created a, a, a short time to pray. I uh, decided to make it regular. A short time, again, not too long, uh, uh, generally in the average of about an hour. And I found the prayers of the last few days really very powerful because I am touching God. And I find that some of those things uh, uh, that were beginning to come as this and that, they are clearing. As I focus on them one point at a time and I say, look, God, this is what is written for me in the scripture. I stand on that. You devil, you've lost the battle. Get out of the way. You can't touch. You can't do this. And I find that those things get destroyed and and i get the victory in jesus name that is telling me that victory is possible it is available for you and for me i simply have to stand on what god says on the word of god on the bible and the lord will do it for us in jesus name so what we learn from here is that there is no limit to the means whereby god can transmit his power it can use any means, any method, and we don't have to constrain God to one method at all. He rebuked backslidden Balaam through a dumb ass. He passed judgment on a disobedient prophet uh, through uh, a backslidden prophet, and he fed Elijah through a sparrow, and later on through a widow woman that didn't even have enough to feed himself for a day. She said, I'm gathering this stick to make the last meal, and yeah, uh, uh, and maybe after that we just sit down and wait for that. And God used that situation to feed Elijah all through the famine. And what that is telling me is that God can do anything, anytime, through any means. I must not limit God. I must allow my faith to soar with, uh, in, into the height and to believe God that God will do anything he wants to do. Let me just quickly go through some of the points that I put down on the outline uh, uh, based on this text of the scripture. The first point there, it reminds us that every great storm gives way to a great calm and also great miraculous breakthroughs. So when you are passing through great calms, sorry, great storms, know that there is a great calm ahead of you know that there are great miracles awaiting for you on the other side if you're not going to give up the boat docked at Gennesaret at the fourth watch between 3 and 6 a.m that was very early in the morning and in both matthew and luke's account in fact sorry mark's account we find some details the mark's account actually brought uh forward some more detail he said, when they came into the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore, so they've not even stepped out yet as they come near to the shore. Uh, when they came out of the ship, straightway the people knew. At that 3 to 6 a.m., who were those people that were there? Maybe people that have been fishermen, fishing in the night, or people that were just getting up early in the morning to go to work. I remember when I was growing up as a small boy in the village, sometimes we like when we are going for, for farm or a, a serious work, we like to leave very early in the morning. Sometimes four o'clock we start to say, let's get to the farm uh, on time and do the bulk of the work before the sun becomes too hot. Because when the sun, Africa sun, becomes hot, uh, people get tired. We always like to live so early like that. In fact, for some people that want to go to market a, a, a long distance, sometimes they get up 2 a.m. to prepare and leave so that they get to the market before the people living in that place 
actually get to the market themselves because they want to keep the early bargain and make a lot of profit. So these people have maybe gone up uh, to fetch water or to do their normal business, whatever it were. And the moment they saw Jesus, they noticed it was Jesus. We are told immediately they ran throughout the whole region. They stopped what they wanted to do. They left what they wanted to do and ran to go and call people and say, the miracle worker is here. We must use this opportunity. We can do our farming next day. We can do our business next day, but we must make use of these opportunities. And that reminds us of, of a statement that was made by uh, somebody many years ago. He may no longer be alive. He says the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of that opportunity. God will bring opportunity our way. God will bring something our way. And if we are just following a traditional routine, no, I have this routine. I have this tradition. I must keep to my tradition because I'm so, I feel so comfortable, so relaxed when I'm keeping to those traditions and routines. You find that you may miss the opportunity that God is bringing your way. I mean, just like we were discussing about uh, making use of the uh, 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 easement that has been allowed for six people to gather, suggestion was made that uh, we could make it on Saturday. In my mind, I told myself, well, if it is on Saturday, I will go. But normally, on the normal routines, because I work Monday to Friday, uh, uh, if I keep Saturday off. I don't normally make any appointment. I don't go out, I eat, not even to gym or to exercise unless it is uh, something critical. Uh, but I normally decide to use that as my day to rest and as my day to uh, prepare for the week ahead. But as we were discussing, I told myself, even though my routine is not to go out on Saturday, but on this occasion, I will join. Uh, uh, I will go out. Uh, if it happens to be fixed on, uh, say, this coming Saturday. So this is something we need to take into consideration, that sometimes God will bring opportunity your way at a time that is not convenient with you, at a time that conflicts with your normal routine, at a time that is not uh, uh, what you will consider the best time of your life. It, the important thing is for you to recognize that opportunity. If you don't recognize you find that that opportunity will just slip by. It's another statement that keeps coming back to my mind regularly is that he who would not, when he may, will eventually have a, a, a nay, that is a no, when he would. In other words, if opportunity keep on coming and you keep on turning it down, keep on turning it down, a time will come that that opportunity will no longer come. And what it, the, the way it was presenting that statement was that if somebody, like, say, is just uh, giving you something and you keep saying no, 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 uh, uh, because you don't recognize the value of the thing, a time may come that you want that very thing. Maybe you rush to the same person and say, give me this gift, and the person say no, because the thing has been used for something else or it's no longer a priority for that individual. So we need to recognize when opportunity lands at our feet. And we need to ensure we don't allow um, uh, maybe our traditions, our self-made routines or whatever to hinder us from making good use of that opportunity. So Jesus entered into the villages, cities, and country. His ministry was not tied to one place. In fact, Mark's account is actually what uh, uh, brings that out. We are told that... Um, in verse 56, whether so if I, he entered into villages, cities, or country. So he was moving from place to place, going from town to town, city to, to, to city. And so his ministry was not just centered on one place, not one uh, uh, spot, not one street, not one locality. He had to move from place to place, from place to place, and so on. And we need to follow his example. Remember when he commissioned the disciples, he says, if you go to one place and they don't receive you, don't waste all your life there trying to convince people that don't want to be convinced. Just shake the sand off your feet and go to other places. 
so that you will be able to cover as much grounds as what God wants us to do. We need to expand our ministry, think of other options we can use. Let's not just limit ourselves to one method that we've been using for a long time. You know, when, you are, you, when you've used a method for a long time, you become comfortable with it, you become associated with it, and you don't want to move away from that. Again, I'm not saying we should throw away what has been established and proven to be working and to be helpful just for the sake that we want to uh, uh, change for changing sake. There are times people just keep uh, become uh, uh, un unstable. They want to change just for the sake of changing, not because it is necessary. That again would be uh, wrong. So the sick were laid on the street. Uh, 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 and all of them that touched the hem of Jesus Christ uh, coming were made perfectly whole. They touched the border of his coming by faith. It is the touching by faith that brought the healing. Remember when the woman with the 12 years uh, issue of blood touched Jesus Christ, and Jesus stopped and asked, who touched me? The disciples felt it was strange to ask such a question. He says, look at the multitude. They are trunking you. Everybody is touching you. Uh, why do you ask this kind of question? And Jesus Christ said, I know somebody has taught me. He picked up the touch of that woman because that was different from the touch of other people. Others may have touched out of curiosity to see how his body feels. You see a human being, does he feel like this? And so on, out of, uh, for whatever reason. But this woman touched by faith. He wanted healing. And the moment he touched, virtue went out of Jesus and healed her. So it is the touch of faith looking up to god by faith and that touch of faith doesn't have to be physical you can touch him through <clears throat> the word of god as i mentioned recently something just occurred to me that i need to just uh, 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 intensify that prayers and i did just in the last few days and i've already seen significant changes to the glory of god so the sick were healed and we can touch God by faith. And they, they, remember, there were other instances in the Bible that people touch uh, by faith uh, and got healing. Uh, of course, that includes the story of a dead man. That dead man couldn't manifest faith, but it was just God trying to uh, show uh, that um, a, a touching uh, can transmit power and hit and, and, and miracle. You remember the story in Second Kings 13 where the children of Israel were going to bury a dead man, and then they saw a group of people, maybe like those group, they could have been the armed robbers wanting to come and destroy things. So when they saw the group coming, they wanted to run for their life. They threw this dead man into a cave, and that happened to be a cave where Elijah uh, was buried. And Elijah's body has decayed, but his bones were still in the in, in the grave. Um, sorry, Elisha. And when the dead man's bone touched the bone of Elisha, both of them were dead. What happened? The dead man came back to life, cut up, and start running with these other uh, people. Remember in Acts chapter 19, how aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from the body of Paul, and on whosoever they were laid those people were healed. Remember in Acts chapter 5, verse 15, how the shadow of Peter, shadow has no substance, no material in it. It's just a reflection from the sun. How the shadow of Peter healed uh, sick people that were lying down. Again, it tells us that God can do anything through any means. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he did in the past, he can do again today. What he did through Peter or Paul, he can do through you and me. We must, however, learn to seize the opportunities he presents to us daily and have faith in God. We are going to pray right now. We're going to call upon God, and we are also going to touch God by faith. Whatever situation you are going through, whatever condition you are encountering, whatever challenge you are facing, just touch God by faith right now. Read, reach out and touch God by faith, and you will find that your touching God by faith will bring the miracle that you need in Jesus' name. Let us pray.